Just north of Southampton on the banks of the River Test is the small market town of Romsey. And it was here in 1898 that the Frith Photographic Team captured this beautifully composed image of the marketplace. Frith took several pictures of Romsey's town centre, but it's the market square I need to find. Can you help me with this photograph? Where do you think that is? Is this a trick question? <laughs> no, it's not a trick question. I'm trying to find out where it is. That's a beautiful picture. Yeah. Can I ask where you got it from? It's a, it's a Victorian picture, yes. very famous photographer right. called Frith. Okay. He took this, right. and my job is to find out exactly where it was from. Oh, that's so, easy. All right, go on it's then. It's just in the corner, my dear, and you'll see the, the statue. The star of the show here is Lord Palmerston, who was Britain's Prime Minister not once but twice in the 1850s and 60s. He's very much the local lad made good. But when you look at the photo closely, it contains clues to one of Romsey's traditional industries. And that's something I want to discuss with local historian Phoebe Merrick. Even today, looking around the modern town, there's no getting away from the fact that this town seems to enjoy its beer. Two references to breweries here. Here, with the off-licence, and here with the old pub. Romsey was famous for pubs, wasn't it? Oh, very much so. When we were looking uh, to do the history of pubs in Romsey, we found 84 of them. 84? It's a small town, though. How many About people? About 5,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a pub for every family, but not quite. But I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? Yes. Mind you, I think many of them were no more than beer houses. And often it was wrapped up in the front room uh, and the wife ran it as an additional source of income. Not like now, when if you run a pub, it's a full-time job. But why should Romsey need so many pubs? Because you're on a main road from Winchester to the west of England, you're on the road between Salisbury and Southampton. All those travellers need refreshment, as do their horses, of course. People sometimes, in those days, would think of Romsey as a place to get drunk, is that right? Oh, very, yes. Um, I mean, the old saying is, so drunk he must have been to Romsey. <laughs> the alternative well. is, it's a straight road to Romsey and zigzag back from there. <laughs> Time to turn attentions to Frith, though, and what he was trying to do with this particular photo of Romsey. Right, well, what is, I suppose what's surprising is that the Frith photograph does not show the Abbey Church. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Because yeah. that is so much the, the dominant feature of the whole of Romsey. Almost everywhere you stand, you get a glimpse of that church. Frith managed to find somewhere that didn't have it. He got a good photograph, though, because the way it comes to a point with Lord Palmerston's statue as the central focus. But nonetheless, to, to get a photograph from anywhere in Romsey without a glimpse of the Abbey Church is quite hard work. The 12th century Abbey, once a house for Benedictine nuns, is the most famous site in Romsey, and I want to give it a proper place in my photo. Come on, cars. This way, sir. Um, cars. The moment you start taking a photograph, cars. Thank you very much. OK, now we can go. Right, this is it. We want cars in the picture. So there it is, different from the Frith photo. Mine is of the best feature of Romsey. This splendid building was already 600 years old when Lord Palmerston was around, and I think this is a worthy addition to our album. Before I leave town, there's just time for a short mm, pit stop. I hope you understand this is purely for research purposes. A taste of Romsey now fully updated. In 2008, it looked like the local tradition of beer making might have disappeared. But 18 months ago, with the arrival of a brand new brewery, the captivating smell of hops is back in the air. The owner, Nigel Welsh, is going to introduce me to the mysteries of the process. You're going to come up to the mash tun and hopefully regulate the flow of the sparge. The Would mash you... tun and regulate the flow of the sparge. What on earth's he talking about? Still, 
It certainly smells interesting. So this is uh, this is the water, hot water. Hot liquor. And what's liquor? Liquor is water. We don't use the word water. It's dirty stuff. Going over what's down it, there? That's the malted barley. Right, now what do I do? Well, you're going to check this dial over here. Right. And make sure the regulated flow of 30 litres a minute is going through. Well, that says 35... 35.4. 35. Oh. And if you want to just uh, adjust this lever here... Right. ..and close it down a bit... Right, there we are. How does this compare with an old brewery in Victorian times? What would that have been like? In Victorian times, um, it would have been a traditional tower brewery, very few pumps involved and a lot more manpower. The whole process brewing the day will take eight hours, and then in seven days' time, you will have beer ready to drink. That's all very well, but I haven't got a week to wait for the good bit. Fortunately, though, Nigel has one he made earlier. That's not bad. It's rather good. And whilst I'm here, it would be foolish not to have a quick sip of the bottle-conditioned house special. No, that's OK. Right. Oh, and there's the deceptively strong local porter. Mmm. Would you like another? I'll have another three, I think. <laughs> <laughs>